Uh, I want the audience, because you guys have watched it, you have your own personal experiences, you have your own Afros. Tell us about your story, tell us about your comments, tell us about your questions. Who's the first one? Who's the brave soul? Aha! Go ahead. Afro pup, yes. Stand up. Let them about Stand up. Stand up. Tell us your name and tell us your comments. I'm Grace, and upon watching this um, <coughs> documentary, or short film, um, I should say, um, a lot of the focus has been towards other people, people of other races or nationalities being so <coughs> forthcoming and wanting to touch our hair. In my experience, I find that, that black women are the one that come up to me and that are very aggressive and just like, hey, let me touch it, you know, <laughs> and just mess with my fur. Like, I, I like it a certain way. No, the fur is being lopsided. No, 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 it's staying still right now. <laughs> but I find it very, you know, very interesting that it's black women that do that. I haven't, most, um, I have a, friends of, you know, multiracial backgrounds. And, you know, the ones that are not black, they're, they'll usually either ask me for my permission or admire it from afar and they understand that, you know, it's, it's invasive. You're, you know, you're invading my personal space by coming up and touching me. But, the, you know, my black friends, they feel comfortable, I guess, because oh, I'm black, you're black, right. you know, we're sisters, so I can come and do that. It's okay for me to do that. So I find it's us that don't have the boundaries, mm -hmm. that don't understand that it's not okay for you to do it just because. Are they doing it because their hair is not kinky and they both changed it? Okay. Either way, either way, okay. whether their hair is permed and a weave, right. you know, kinky, whatever it is, they come, they come to me and they just go in there and just touch it without asking me and just because they think it's okay. Do you guys feel like there's like a civil war sometimes in black men? It's like the weave team and there's like the Afro team and it's like, you know. Team the, natural. Yeah, I mean, team natural and, you know, and team weave. I mean, how, talk about that. Somebody, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Julie and I were there at the, the experiment the day of or the exhibit um, and I feel like the takeaway for me I was excited to see like Michaela was talking about the diversity you have three different women and I imagine that you ladies chose these people because of the diversity that they represented in terms of black hair and yet the affinity was toward the natural you know the woman who was wearing her hair natural and it was big and I feel like the whole conversation sort of shifted and, and, and went in that direction so one, one thing, I mean, one question that I have is, you talked also about just this kind of the evolution of, of black hair and, you know, how do we know that this natural hair movement that's happening right now is not just a fad, it's just another, you know, point in time when people, you, you said that there are a lot of racial tensions happening this year, it could be tied to that. So I'm curious what you guys think about that, but I also do appreciate the fact that, um, you know, it is sort of opening up the conversation. There is a, a civil war going on between natural hair, you know, advocates and people who wear weaves or yeah, I want to ask you, is there a civil war within? Do you feel the civil war within to say, am I going to go to team natural? Am I going to go to team, you know, weave? Or is there, you know, do you feel that civil war within ever? Have you? Um, I mean, I wore my hair natural up until college, and it was really a matter of convenience. I relaxed my hair my sophomore year of college for the very first time because I was away from home. There was nowhere for me to do my, I was straightening it and doing all kinds of other stuff. And you know, it was it was something that I chose to do at that point in time just because I wanted to and because it was easier. Um, but you know, I feel like the Civil War really within, it's, it's not something, I mean, I, I grew up here in New York and maybe there's just a certain sort of inherent, mm -hmm. you know, perspective of diversity that I have. You know, I, I don't feel, I feel like I relate to Antonia a little bit more than I do to some of the women who I grew up who were with who are from here. You know, I feel like it really wasn't ever something that I thought of in terms of, you know, my own personal, you know, self-identification. I mean, it was just, my hair. So people are assigning to you something. Right, because I, feel you're changing like the, your I feel like yeah. the conflict comes when, you know, everyone around me is going natural. And, right. you know, I feel like the conflict comes when these conversations happen and mm -hmm. there's almost a stigma now against people mm -hmm. who relax their hair. It's like mm -hmm. you, you, you know, people assume that you have some Self sort issues. of like, yeah. right, some internal <laughs> conflict happening when I personally That's don't true. feel like I, I do. While I was at the exhibit, um, I was standing there, and there was myself, a girl with dreads, and um, Maya in the first row. Hey, girl. <laughs> and, um, Who was the relaxed girl? Oh, that's Jade. Oh, was it we? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I was standing there, and first off, the majority of people who came up to me 
were people who were African American mm. who came up and touched my hair. Out of, let's say, the thousand people who came out, I would say 17 people touched my hair. And out of that 17, about 12 of them were African American. So I don't, I feel like this whole thing was turned into race and why do we have to educate the white person? Like, it's not like that at all because there's people in our own race who need to be educated. So while I was standing there, something that kind of hit me hard, nothing else hit me hard up until this point. I was standing there and there was a woman with a bandana on her head. And she came up to me and she was like, you must be getting paid for this. And I, I wasn't answering her. I was trying to listen to what she was going to say to just, you know, make herself look stupid. So she then continues to go on, well, my hair looks like this, and takes her bandana off. And her, her hair was super duper short. Cool. She's like, you don't represent me. And I stood back for a second and I was like, I'm not supposed to represent you. I'm representing my truth. I'm not bringing forth your truth. So for me to, for, for you to tell me that I'm not representing you, I'm not standing up here representing every African American woman. I'm not standing up here representing every biracial could you, woman. Could you tell she was in pain? She was, she was. Uh, you represent something to her. You represent. No, I mean, I mean, I don't mean to put you. No, 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 no. You know what it is? I feel like a lot of people think that it's, it's, it's perms against naturals. It's not. It's still naturals against naturals, and I don't care what anybody says. But if we can't be in conversation, because part of you know what you, we have to have the difficult conversation, and often that woman is never in conversation with you. And so if the entry point is your hair, we have to stand in each other's thing because you, we've got a conversation about her because I'm putting us together. We both like skinny, we got blonde hair, let's talk about that. <laughs> so there's a conversation. I'm old enough to be your mama, so I don't have that conversation anymore. But there used to be a conversation is that she is coming with, coming at me with knives. So I'm going to put up my so because I know that she already doesn't like me because I'm light and my hair is like so I've got to come we are comparing pain right yeah. and I'm connecting with her pain and she's gonna give back to me and we're gonna have this thing rather than we we our beauty has been turned into weapons for us to fight and, and separate each other and so we have to have these un, uncomfortable conversations so we can put the weapons down and understand each other and that's what you're experiencing in that kind of confrontation the process like right. you don't yeah, wake yeah. up nobody wakes up and goes oh I want to hate that sister today or I want to hate myself <laughs> no it's hard and people say well, we got to love each other and embrace yeah. each other that's this is what this is it's yeah. a process because you, I can feel your pain too you didn't like the shade just like she didn't like never being called cute yeah. on the playground how about that like yeah. For a year, and then you show up, and then you, because I look, I have very rarely seen an advertisement with that tight girl. Like, mm -hmm. yes, there's the loose curl, and black, even black pro people who are making these products, mm -hmm. I don't see that plush mm -hmm. Afro puff in the ad mm -hmm. saying this is the this is the ideal and you don't hair. See it in chocolate version. That's, so that's, you so, don't see the so at the end of the day, you don't see why, is that, why is that projected no, your fault. It doesn't belong to you either. No, it doesn't belong to you. No, that's what I'm fault. saying. No, that no, This no, is no, the no, kinky no, situation. No. It's hurting everybody. <laughs> Nobody's winning. This sister in the back, I want to get her. She's like, Statue of Liberty up there. When I had locks, I had long locks. It was mostly black women. 90% of the time wanted to touch my hand, talk to me, and was like, why did you do that? How, How did you feel about this when you were out there? You were protesting. So tell us about your I protested because I felt like, um, I felt many things. I felt like one, white people, anybody else touching my hair without permission or even with permission, which I wouldn't give, but if they even ask, what, what education are you getting from touching my hair? Like, what are you learning about me and my pain? What are you learning about my experience as a black woman? When you see Antonio's think, film, do you feel differently? When you see the whole thing put together? Um, I think putting it together, and I've talked to other people in it, because I haven't seen the whole thing, honestly. I came late, I only saw it oh, online. Okay, okay. But I have talked to other people since then, and I see that it wasn't right. about you can touch my hair. Like, I, you don't get that, though. That's why I was I wanted to say to Autumn. And Autumn, right. Right. you're the only one that was out there the second day that talked to Rada and the other sister that I was, I think her name was Sharon, and we wanted to have dialogue with the sisters that were holding the sign saying you can touch my hair, but it was so 
immediately. You were the only one who would talk to us as we walked up to you. You talked to us and we would say, like, why do you why are you doing this? You explained to it, explained mm -hmm. to us like why you were there, what your motivations were. Mm -hmm. We talked about hair. The other two women, they were already guards were up. And that mm -hmm. goes back to that whole pain, like you're you don't know me, you don't feel what I feel, you're mm -hmm. against me. And it's not about being against mm -hmm. or anything, but we have to have the conversations. Like that woman coming to you was about her watching probably BET or any <laughs> MTV and watching hip hop videos <coughs> and never seeing a chocolate yeah, system, yeah. never seeing anybody with hair like me yeah. or, or dread, like I, I've gone to so many beauty panels, I've never been to one where there's a black woman with dreadlocks. And I'm like, mm -hmm. in New York City, yeah. we have to ha invite these people, as black women, we have to invite these people to the table to talk and about. And I, I want to touch on what you just said, yeah. because natural hair on a light skinned girl, that's in ads. I see that's it all what? the time. Light yes, skin, yes, hair, I mean, yes, natural yes. hair on a light skinned girl. Yes. That is a part of the advertising campaign. And like but a brown skin woman with natural hair, that's more acceptable. Say it again. Say it again. That, like Michaela touched yeah. on, that's more acceptable. That's right. that gray area. Michaela and mm -hmm. Autumn's look is more acceptable right. in mainstream media and mm -hmm. advertising world in the fashion world than my look, for example. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if and I that's where coming from. And it's also rooted in self esteem. If I didn't have the confidence that I have to rock this to feel good, no matter if my hair is that short or that long then I'm going to have pain and I'm going to project my pain against the nearest person who is like Michaela or Autumn. It's not going to be against um, Unilever or Clarol or any other right. major brand, which right. is what we should talk to. Right. We should be writing letters to advertising companies. The film actually brought up a lot of feeling in me because I'm not black, you know, and people associate me as being black because of my hair and I'm actually Latina. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel it in both communities. So in the black community, I'm actually celebrated. And I'm going to be honest about it because people are like, oh, she's light skin, the hair is beautiful. Oh, you're from, where are you from, girl? Mm -hmm. But in the Latina community, it's like, right. where's the brush? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. did you go to the salon today? You know, what's going on? You know, do you have money to go get your hair done? So, you know, and I hear it. I hear it all the time, you know, and it's hard to actually have these conversations with my friends because my friends have relaxed hair. And I just decided that, you know what, this is my crown and glory, mm -hmm. and I just need to rock it. Would and you identify as a Latina of African ancestry? Is that um, I'm actually Puerto Rican. I'm not sure. I'm sure there's some um, African folks up in there. But it's, but it's funny. <laughs> But it's funny because if you see my parents, you know, my dad looks Indian, dot not feather, you know, my mom looks white. So, um, you know, I always get that question, who are you, where are you from, what are you, all that stuff, you know, and I think it just brings along the notion that I think we're just all beautiful as women. You know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter about hair sometimes, and I know that there's always going to be controversy, and you guys have brought up you know, about pain, we all deal with pain. And I resonate a lot with, with what you said as far as the sisterhood, because I don't get that. I don't get that in my Latin community, and I get that within the black community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I thrive off of, you know, looking at the blogs and looking at the mm -hmm. vloggers, because I can relate to that. You know, I'm not a Sofia Vergara, you know, a Nunevision, you don't see a girl with a fro. I have, um, one thing that you just mentioned that I thought was interesting is that I almost feel like blackness is acceptable in doses. Mm. Like, we're okay with, you know, it's almost like it's the time for the light skin with right. the natural hair. That's the dose that we're on right now. Right. We're going to see mixed chicks, so we're going to see, you know, kinky curly, and that's what's okay right now. But it is hard to find the chocolate complexion girl who doesn't have the bone straight hair. Mm -hmm. Like they can do that. They can do the Naomi or they can do, you know, mm -hmm. the light skin girl with the with the with Even the, the new black hair. Barbie dolls, that's right. how they make them. The chocolate girl has the bone straight hair exactly. and the light skin girl has the big super curls. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like I'm yeah. I'm I'm excited for that time whenever that is where you see the chocolate complexion and yeah. the natural hair as a as a symbol of beauty. Yeah. And I guess it just takes time to get there in this yeah. film that Antonia hey Antonia, welcome back. Hi. It's when it is <laughs> pushing it and making and allowing it to happen. So it's exciting, but I feel like just wait your turn because you know eventually that platform will be there when you see girls with locks that are chocolate and you know that kind of thing but I still think this is a great moment mm -hmm. um.